Hi, Mystery Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain an American drama thriller film called Hide and Seek. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Allison Calloway and her nine-year-old daughter, Emily Calloway, are playing in a park together. Allison's husband and psychologist, Dr. David Calloway, is there too, he watches them play. At night, Allison and Emily play a game of hide-and-seek. After which Allison tucks Emily to bed. Allison seems to be worried about something. David asks her about it, but she dismisses it. Allison then goes to take a bath. However, around two in the morning, David wakes up to see Allison still not in bed. He goes to check the bathroom, where he is terrified to see Allison sitting on a bloodied tub. She had committed suicide by cutting her wrist. Emily stands in the doorway as she watches David hugging Allison's body and crying. Cut to a few days later, Emily is in a children's hospital and seems depressed. David talks to his colleague and good friend, Dr. Catherine Carson, and decides that it would be best if he and Emily move to the countryside for some time. Catherine is close to Emily as well. She hugs Emily and wishes her goodbye, and they leave. Emily brings her cat with her to the new place. David and Emily are finally at their new home. It lies in an area surrounded by woods and is very quiet. They are welcomed by a sheriff and the owner of the house. As they are looking around, Emily disappears. They find her near the woods staring at something. That night, Emily doesn't eat anything and insists on sleeping early. David tries to cheer her up, but the girl is traumatized by her mother's death. He then gives her a diary to write down her feelings, after which Emily wishes her favorite doll named Alex goodnight before going to sleep. The following day, David is unboxing his belongings in his study room, when Emily goes into the woods following a butterfly. In the end, she sees a cave. By the time David starts looking for her, she is back. But her favorite toy doll, Alex, is not. Shortly, he and Emily leave to run some errands. As David is pumping gas into his vehicle, he sees a woman playing with a little girl. Thinking that the little girl could become friends with Emily, he introduces himself to them. The woman's name is Elizabeth Young. She seems to have charmed David. He invites them to come over someday. That night while tucking Emily to sleep, David asks her about her doll, Alex. To which she says that she doesn't like her anymore. She tells him that she has replaced Alex with her new friend named Charlie. When David questions her further about Charlie, she says that he doesn't like being talked about. David calls Catherine to tell her about the incident. They both agree that Charlie is an imaginary friend Emily has created to cope with her trauma. The following day, David finds Alex in the bin with her face distorted. Later at dinner, David tries to talk to her about Charlie. At that time, she tells him that Charlie is a lot of fun like her mommy used to be. That night, he gets another nightmare. He has been getting the same nightmare of the New Year's Eve party that occurred the night before Allison's death. The nightmare wakes him up exactly at the time he did when Allison died. He hears a noise, and goes to check in the bathroom to see the words you let her die. The bathtub is filled, and Emily's crayon lay around. He turns around and sees Emily behind him. But when asked about it, Emily insists it was Charlie who did it. It was Charlie. The following day, Elizabeth and her niece, Amy, come over. David introduces Amy to Emily, but she seems to have no reaction. As they play, Amy is eager to become friends, so she hands her doll to Emily. But when Emily returns it back, its face is distorted like Alex's was. Emily tells Amy that she shouldn't be here. Feeling scared, they leave soon after. When David asks Emily about Amy, she replies she doesn't need any new friends and that Charlie is enough. Later, Emily plays outside as David does the dishes. He sees a man sitting beside her, so he goes out to check and finds that the man is their neighbor Stephen. They have an awkward conversation after which David warns Emily not to talk to strangers. Cut to that night, David hears Emily laugh, but when he goes to check on her, she is alone. He asks if Charlie is here, but Emily says that he just left through the window. David tries to talk to her about Charlie. But Emily reveals that Charlie doesn't like David. David writes all of this in his journal after putting her to bed. Later, we see Emily play hide and seek with Charlie. She goes out of her room, and look around the house, to look for him. She finds a door behind a closet. It leads to a basement downstairs. She walks there, still looking for him, then, suddenly the lights go off, and she screams in fear. David quickly comes to get her. She tells him that Charlie was hiding in the dark. The following day, Elizabeth comes over for dinner. Emily doesn't seem to like her. 
Elizabeth tries to have a conversation with Emily and gives her some books to read. However, Emily acts hostile towards her and drops all the books to the floor. Seeing this, David demands her to go to her room. Soon, Elizabeth leaves. That night, David again wakes up exactly at 2.06. There is a noise coming from the bathroom. He goes in to check and sees the words now look what you've done. The bathtub is full of dirty water. As David goes in to drain it, he feels something inside. It is the dead body of the cat that lived with them. Furious, David goes to Emily's room, but Emily again insists that it was Charlie. Charlie did it. He then cleans up the mess in the bathroom. The following day, Emily shows David pictures she has drawn of Charlie and her mother. David tries to tell her that Charlie is not real, but Emily keeps on yelling his name. Charlie! 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 That day, Catherine visits them. Catherine is David's good friend who is very close to Emily. Emily is very excited to meet her. She suggests David to bring Emily back to New York. He tells her that he will consider it. After she is gone, David goes to Emily's room and sees that she has drawn pictures of her mother killing herself in the diary he had given her. Elizabeth comes over again that day, but David doesn't hear her knocking, so she comes in and goes into Emily's room. She has come to make amends with Emily, but Emily tells her that she is playing hide and seek with Charlie, and points at the closet. As Elizabeth opens the closet, she is attacked by someone and falls down the windows. After a few hours, a sheriff comes over to ask about Elizabeth. The sheriff informs David that he had found Elizabeth's car crashed down the road, and her niece told him that she had come here. But David knows nothing about the incident. The sheriff then asks Emily about her, but she lies and tells him that she hasn't seen her. After he is gone, David senses something wrong. He sees the window broken. Emily is crying hysterically. She shows him the time. It is exactly 2.06 again. David rushes to the bathroom to see some words written on the shower curtain. Can you see now? He opens it and is terrified to see a dead Elizabeth lying in the tub. He rushes back to a crying Emily, but she still insists that it was Charlie. She says she cannot tell David anything about him. Then, David locks her in the room and rushes out. Shortly after, we see someone open the door for her. Emily then calls Catherine to tell her she doesn't want to play with Charlie anymore. David, on the other hand, decides to get rid of Elizabeth's body. But when he goes into the bathroom, the body is already gone. Emily says that Charlie just left with it. This has gone too far. David is now furious and is determined to find out who Charlie really is. He runs outside to search for him. Suddenly, his neighbor Stephen appears behind him, and demands to see Emily because he has heard noises from their house. David attacks him assuming that this whole time, he is Charlie. He rushes back to his home and locks the doors. He tells him to stay away from his daughter. Emily hugs him in fear and begs not to make her see Charlie again. David then walks into his study room, where he is surprised to see that none of the boxes have been opened since they moved here, even the journals are blank. He is in shock because he has been in the study writing his journal several times after the move. Suddenly, everything comes back to him. We see that the person Emily met at the cave that day was David. He realizes that he has dissociative identity disorder, and Charlie is not imaginary at all, Charlie is David himself. Whenever Charlie would emerge, David would be in his study. He also finally recalls the New Year's Eve party the night before his wife's death. He had caught Allison making out with another guest. Charlie was created as a way to express David's rage so that he could murder his wife, something the docile David was too decent to do. Emily knew the entire time about her father's split personality but did not tell him, because she was unsure which personality murdered her mother until Charlie killed Elizabeth. Every time Charlie comes out, David doesn't remember anything. When David comes to realize this, Charlie's personality completely takes over him. He tells Emily that daddy is gone. Luckily, the neighbor has called the sheriff, who comes to check on David. He finds Emily in her room when the lights go off. The sheriff goes downstairs to check. However, he is killed by Charlie. Charlie senses that Emily doesn't like him anymore. He starts a game of hide and seek and starts to count. Emily rushes to her room. Just then, Catherine arrives. As she moves down the basement, Charlie appears behind her and pushes her down. He locks her there, where she finds the sheriff's dead body. Emily, on the other hand, locks herself inside her room. Charlie breaks the door open, but Emily has already snuck out through the window and is running away to the woods. She hides in the cave. Catherine takes the sheriff's gun and runs to save Emily. Before Charlie can get to Emily, Catherine reaches the cave as well. But Charlie pretends to be David, and when she lets her guards down, he attacks her again. 
Emily stops Charlie from killing Catherine by distracting his attention to herself. As Charlie moves closer to kill Emily, Catherine comes in between them and shoots him to death. Cut to a few months later, Emily and Catherine have moved back to New York. They live happily now. The movie ends as the camera zooms into Emily's drawing of herself and Catherine, where she has two faces suggesting that she might also have two personalities like her father. Now, for the explanation of the movie. It is clear by the end of the movie that David and Charlie are the same person. David has a mental disorder called dissociative identity disorder, which is ironic because David himself is a psychiatrist. When Charlie murdered Allison that night, David was unknown to any of this. Even when they moved houses, Charlie did not go away. Every time Charlie arrives, David is seen in his study room writing or listening to music. But he had never even unboxed his belongings in that room. Even his notebook is empty. This suggests that he hallucinated all of it to avoid coming face to face with his other personality. In the movie, we also see Emily being hostile. She even purposely disfigured the face of Amy's doll. There are three possible reasons. The first reason is that she might do it out of dislike for Amy's aunt, Elizabeth. Second, she might do it in order to frighten Amy into staying away, so that Charlie wouldn't hurt her. The third possibility is that Emily was displaying the pathological side of herself. That's my explanation for the movie Hide and Seek. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.